Okay, another <clears throat> episode of Dream Assassin. And today I'm going to be talking about something that I haven't mentioned at all and that I had been, there's definitely been resistance to sharing this. And I'm going to start uh, with how it all came in. I was in Mexico and we had a gathering in the evening. Jimmy had invited, I think it was Jimmy, somebody had invited a healer to come. This is an alternative healer, right? So he came and he he just joined with all of us and he had a table and he had these magnets and I mean for me what 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 I saw was someone that was just really dropped in and really connected to things going on in the mind that, you know, show up in the body. And, and so he had these magnets and he would, when you were laying on the table, he would place them over your organs and he could tell you where there was a block. Right, so an emotional block, like he could tell, like if, if there was something going on with your heart, he could he could tell. And uh, I remember Joyce saying to me, "Go, go, like it, have a turn." So I did. Now I want to be really clear about this. This guy knew nothing about me. He knew definitely knew nothing about what was going on with my body. When I say that, what I mean is he had no idea that I have PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. So he had no idea that my ovaries don't do what they're really supposed to do. So I'm laying on the table and he, he's moving the magnets around. He's like, no, there's nothing there, nothing there, nothing there, nothing there. And then he gets a little lower, right? And he puts one magnet on top of one ovary. And, and then he says something like, yeah, you're blocked there. And, and then, you know, the other one, and yeah, you're blocked there too. And then this is what happened. Okay, so one, I was pleasantly surprised that he was, you know, connected so that he could tell, you know? So it felt like I could actually trust, really trust what he was saying because he didn't know anything about me and he knew, he could tell that there was issues with ovaries. And and uh, there was a little bit of, how did that go? Oh, oh yeah, okay, yeah. Th there was, because I mean, there was an assumption on his part that um, it was a problem because, you know, women almost always want to have children, right? And, um, but of course, this woman is really quite fine with not having children. So, so then it wasn't a problem, right? And it wasn't a problem. But then, how, how did that happen? Then he said something like, Like, there's something else I could tell you, but um, it would be difficult. I think that's what he said. And I said, well, I don't mind difficult. And then he said there was sexual abuse. and I, And the whole world just like... My, the whole world just disappeared and I flashed into this uh, memory of my mother when I was about, I want to say 12, 
11, I don't know, somewhere in there. And she, I remember her saying to me, did your uncle ever touch you inappropriately? And I was like, no, no, <laughs> definitely not, <laughs> you know? And, and I just want to be really clear. This all happened really, really fast. So I'm on the table. He says there's sexual abuse. I flash into this past moment with my mom. And in that instant, I knew that something had happened. It's like when the truth shows up and feels like a lightning bolt through your system. That's what it felt like. And then, so all this happened over like, God, I want to say like three seconds, you know. And so I flash into my mom asking me about my uncle. And then he says to me, yeah, it was an uncle. And I'm like, holy fuck. And it was actually a really beautiful moment. I mean, sometimes, I mean, when the truth feels like that, when it feels like, I call them truth two by fours, you know, when it actually feels like you're being whacked with a two by four and it's not really the truth that something had happened that I don't remember it was more like the truth recognizing that it is actually time to lean into something and trust trust the process that's coming up. Trust how it looks and how it sounds and how it feels. So trust that. It's that deeper kind of truth. It's not truth of something that's happened in form. You know? So I just want to make that really clear. So what happened after that was really beautiful. Because I wasn't angry and I wasn't... I actually just went right from there to a few minutes later, just being in the actual experience of forgiveness. And I, and I want to be really clear about the word forgiveness. I'm talking about A Course in Miracles forgiveness, not the Bible forgiveness, not, not, you know, somebody did something and I have the right to be angry and the right to feel violated and the right to feel blah, 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 blah. And then forgiving them for that. Whatever it happens to be. Somebody cuts me off in traffic. Somebody doesn't do the dishes. Somebody runs me over with a car. Like, you know, it's not that forgiveness that I'm talking about. I'm talking about the real forgiveness, which is the self going inward and realizing and experiencing that the only thing that needs to actually be forgiven is that I believed anything happened at all. So my own thoughts, that's all that needs to be forgiven. Because it's, it's only my own thoughts that are heavy and messy. Yeah, it's only my own thoughts. It's not the actual events that happen in form or seem to happen in form. So that's how that went on. And that was a beautiful experience because that became a back pocket experience. Because the world says, you know, no, no, no. When you find out something like that, you go through denial, you go through anger, you go through blame, you go through rage, you go through all these things, you know, you know, the world says you do it like this. It looks like this. But I experienced something very different. I experienced... Yeah, so, like I said, I just had the actual experience of real forgiveness. And I had that for quite some time. And so, let me see, that was maybe... I don't know, I'm going to guess. I'm going to guess... Um, like let's say June 2019 I'm guessing so fast forward to now 
Yeah, let's fast forward to right now. What's happening right now? So what's happening right now is yeah so let's start with Harvey Weinstein yeah I'm not gonna be nice about this that motherfucker pisses me off I'm pissed and when it was all going down I was really angry and I didn't even know why I was really angry like what was really going on for me Sure, it's easy to be angry. You know, this asshole is raping women and manipulating women and blackmailing women and blah, 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 blah. It, but that's just maple syrup. That's just stopping at the maple syrup for me. So what's really going on there? Why am I so angry at this? What? Why is it? It's, it's here to show something to me, something in my mind that's lingering or ready to be seen. And then... Yeah, so then, I don't know, like 10 days ago, two weeks ago, I don't know, um, I watched, there's a documentary on Netflix about, um, what the hell is his name, Epstein? It's like four episodes or something, and I watched that, and I was like, like, what a motherfucker, fuck you. Fuck you for doing that shit. So again, something is showing up to show some, show me something. And I realize at some point, I think towards the, the end of the documentary, that I don't want to remember whatever happened. I don't want to remember and not only do I not want to remember it's not like I don't want to remember and I feel great about that and neutral about it whatever no I'm like raging against remembering I'm fucking pissed that I I don't want to remember I'm pissed that I'm resisting it and raging against it I'm pissed that these things are showing up to show me that I am resisting. There's a mountain of resistance here. And it kind of feels like it's on my back, you know? So, now, now let's talk about Dylan. What does Dylan have to do with all this? And, Obviously, I've talked about how Dylan has been a healing symbol for me, but I haven't in a, in a certain way. Well, this is another way where I've been using him as a healing symbol. So this is how it's been happening. So one of the things throughout my life that I've really struggled with is um, sexual fantasies in my mind. They're always violent. And I never knew why. And there was a lot of guilt and shame about that. Because the, the porn that I would watch would be more violent too. And I, I never knew why. I didn't get it. Where is this coming from? What is this from? Now it makes more sense to me, you know, that something happened a long time ago and I don't remember it, but there's a ripple effect, you know, and it's, tr it's trying to come out, it's trying to be revealed. And so this guilt and shame over the violent scenarios or fantasies in my mind and the violent porn it was a heavy load it was a heavy load to bear so and I, I I knew there was something else going on there but I didn't really know what and this is 
my whole life. Like I have no memories of um, like gentle, gentle fantasies. You know, gentle loving fantasies. And so this is another way that Dylan has showed up in my mind. Kind of like a guide. Because the thing is, like Dylan O'Brien in form, I don't know what he's like as a person. And it, it kind of doesn't matter because... Uh, I kind of, I get to kind of make him up in my mind and make him be whatever I need to move through what I'm moving through. And in scenarios like this, with this kind of stuff, it's like, it's almost like, so... Let's say I'm in the middle of a fantasy in my mind, a sexual fantasy in my mind. And it starts to go towards, you know, the violent side. He will show up and, no, no, come back. It's okay to come back. Just come back over here where it's gentler. Just come back, come back over here. And I never had that before. I never ever had that before. So for the first time in my life, while in Mexico, I was actually able to have full, you know, full fantasies in my mind that weren't violent. And I could have an orgasm. That never happened before. So that was really... Um, yeah, I don't even know really what the words are because it changed everything. It changed my whole world. And yeah, I think it was actually shortly after that, that that's when it became clear to me that something happened to me when I was really little. And this repressed, unrecognized experience and emotions about this experience were just like showing up in these messy, violent kind of ways. And yeah. Yeah, the other thing, like I haven't actually, like, so my process actually with healing in my mind is, yeah, this is how it works. It seems, this is how it seems to work for me. So I'll have Dylan in my mind. Well, let's say, let's say it's the, the caught my car experience. And I can tell where I'm supposed to be in my mind if I can see Dylan's face really clearly. If I can't see his face clearly, then it's not where I'm to be in the moment. So, so let's say I'm in my mind. Because th there were so many times where, where I needed to be in my mind was sitting in front of him and telling him the details of my car experience. Sometimes I would try to be somewhere else and Holy Spirit's like, no, come back, come back to this, come back to this. Even though it's already been five times today and it was three times yesterday and 10 times the day before that, come back here, say this again, do this again, share this again, expose this again. 
and that's how it that's how it looks that's just how it looks and i know i'm somewhere i don't need to be in my mind when i can't see his face clearly yeah it's actually um yeah it, there's actually more intimacy and vulnerability when i can see his face clearly And this is not, again, I'm going to say this, this is not an easy symbol for me. You know, I feel like I would much rather it be, I don't know, I don't know, characters in a book or something. Or, you know, Marie loves Osho. I've, I kind of... I wish, I, I don't know. I don't know. I just wish it was different. I wish it didn't look like this. I I wish it didn't look like Gil and O'Brien. And part of that is because yeah, the the belief that the form is real is there. Which is why I'm doing Dream Assassin. You know, and the part of my mind that believes the form is real. Yeah, has a judgment that. That I'm hurting him, actually. That I'm violating him. Which is a really deep, deep, exposing thing for me to say because of what I think happened to me when I was little. You know, like, I'm not sure how deeply I carry the belief in violation, but it's there for sure. And so to feel like I'm doing that to him, it's... It's harsh. It's really harsh. And I don't feel like I have any control over the symbol. There's no, I don't actually have a choice. And I didn't choose it. It wasn't something I chose. It was, it was given. Yeah, I I think there's a lot more to say about all this. Cuz this is the first time I'm exposing this in this way. So I don't really know what it's going to crack open or what it's going to look like or what's going to spill out or I don't know. I just I don't know. Yeah, yeah, there, there's a practice in, definitely a practice in trusting this symbol, leaning into this symbol. And when I say leaning in, I mean using it all the time, I'm taking it everywhere in my mind, because this symbol. guides me. No, no, come back over here. Look over here. See that right there. Notice this right here, you know, and yeah.